Hi, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Stephanie and I'm a pastry chef and a owner of a boutique bakery in New Jersey. I strongly believe every baker should have a go-to pie recipe and I hope that this tender flaky recipe that I'll be demonstrating today could be added to your repertoire. It also produces a very strong crust that will hold up to those heavy fruit fillings. For nut and cream fillings, I prefer, to, I prefer to use a sweet dough. So please check out my videos and see how to make the sweet dough. But for today, let's get started on our flaky recipe. The first thing I do is start measuring out all of my ingredients. When I'm measuring, I prefer to measure by weight and I use, I, this is my favorite, I love this OXO, only because I can pull out the display panel and no matter how large my bowl is, I can still see the display. But for this demonstration, I already have all of my ingredients measured. So the first thing I'm gonna do in my bowl is I'm gonna add 375 grams of all-purpose flour. If you don't have a scale, um, you can always measure it in cups, and this is three cups of all-purpose flour. The next thing I'm going to add in is one teaspoon of salt. Salt acts as a tenderizer. It also is a flavor enhancer and that's why I use that. And then I have two tablespoons of granulated sugar. You just want a little bit of sugar in here just for a little bit of sweetness. Don't put in too much. Just lightly toss those. So those are all of my dry ingredients. Now what I want to do is I want to add my shortening and my butter. Um, these are the fats that I use in the recipe. Uh, for the shortening, I'm going to add in 100 grams. And for the butter, I want this very cold in order for my dough to come out correctly. This is cold, I can barely squeeze it, and I've cut it up into small chunks, and I had this in my freezer for about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna to toss these ingredients together just to get every all the fats, the butter and the Crisco, coated with flour. I use a combination of these two fats, the Crisco and the butter, because I find that the shortening helps produce a firm, moldable dough, whereas the butter just adds flavor. So that's why I use that combination of fats. So the next thing to do is to start partially working in your butter and your shortening. Some will use a pastry cutter, which is perfectly fine. For today, I'm gonna to demonstrate this using my hands because I know a lot of you don't have pastry cutters. Just be a little bit careful because your hands can contain a lot of heat. If you start finding that your butter is getting too soft as you're doing this, just put it into the refrigerator for about five or 10 minutes and continue to work it. So I'm just gonna start picking up my pieces of butter and Crisco, the fat, and I'm squeezing it and I'm coating it with the flour. So I'm creating long layers of this fat. This is what is going to produce that flaky dough that you're looking for. Just be careful as you're doing this. If you overmix the fat and incorporate it too much, uh, you're not going to have those flakes that you're looking for. If you undermix it, the texture is not going to be consistent and it may not hold up to those heavy fillings. So I'm just going to keep doing this. This is going to take me a few minutes. And again, just with my fingers, I'm grabbing my pieces of butter and Crisco, and I'm working them in, creating those layers. So what you can see I have here is I still have pieces of fat, the butter and the shortening. It's about the size of a pea. And again, just make sure you don't have any very, very large chunks. These look perfect. 
And I always keep a little damp towel nearby just to keep my hands clean. The next step is to start adding some liquid. We want to be care very careful on how much liquid that we add into this. I like to use a glass filled with ice water and I'll apply one to two tablespoons at a time. And just start working that gently, tossing the dough that I have so far. I'll use around a third of a cup of ice water, maybe a little bit more. Really depends on the humidity in your house. My dough is almost finished here. When you squeeze it together lightly with your hands, it's going to hold together into a ball. Still feels just a little bit dry. So what I'm going to do is take a food safe sprayer and I'm just going to get down on the bottom of my bowl where I see those dry pieces and just add a little bit more water. I find using the spray bottle helps me control how much water I put in because I don't want too much water in here. And this is perfect, it's holding together. The little bit of dry pieces down here, we'll work those in when we wrap it in plastic. But this is pretty much perfect. I still have nice long layers of, of the fat and the butter hasn't been worked in all the way. So let's go ahead and wrap that in plastic. This is going to sit into my fridge for about two hours. The reason being is because I want to relax the gluten. It's going to be easier to roll out if it's cold. So just form it into a nice disc. It's going to be about seven inches wide all around. And this recipe is going to produce enough for a full 10 inch pie pan and you will have a little bit extra for doing some decorative work also. So put this in the fridge, we'll come back in two hours, I'll show you what it looks like, we'll roll it out and put it into a pie pan. My dough has been in the refrigerator for two hours now. It's quite firm and it's ready to roll out. So let's get started on that. This dough will make a 10 inch pie and then I'll also make a little extra for any decorations you want to do. If you want to put on some lattice work, some leaves. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this out and set it off to the side. And I'm going to form my dough into a nice round circle. This is going to help me in the rolling out process. The first thing you want to do is generously coat your work surface with flour. And I also like to coat the top of my dough and my rolling pin. This is a plastic rolling pin. I've used many types of rolling pins before. I've used metal, I've used wood, and I always come back to this one. This one is my favorite. Main reason being is because the dough sticks less to this than the other ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here in the middle and I'm going to very gently push away from here, come back to the middle and gently push towards myself. Turn my dough at 90 degrees and I'm just going to keep repeating that process. Put it in the center, roll away from myself, I'm just applying a very light pressure here. Back to the center. 
and I'm just going to keep doing this until I roll my dough out large enough for my pie pan. This is a 10 inch pie pan, so I'm going to go to about 13 or 14 inches. So, my dough is rolled out, it's going to fit very nicely into my pie pan. I want to coat the top of this with a little bit of flour. And the reason for that is because I don't want it sticking to my rolling pin. So I'm just going to very gently roll it up with my rolling pin. Put my pie pan here and then very gently roll it over my pie pan. And that's perfect. One of the issues that you may run into is your dough may rip. That's perfectly fine. Just push it right back together with your fingers. Next we're going to go around and we're going to lift the dough and we're going to push it into the bottom of the pan. And that's perfect. So you have a few options here. It depends what look you're going for with your pie. You can cut out, cut off some of this excess dough. Save this dough, don't throw it away. You can cut off some of this excess dough so you can create your fluting or you can simply go around the pie pan and cut the very edges off. This is nice if you're going to be adding leaves or flowers or a braided work around the outside of your pie. And that's it. You can see in my pie pan where I have some big layers of fat here, the butter. You can see those long layers in there. And that's exactly what I'm going to, if I'm going for. Now I'm going to put this pie pan back into the fridge and I can go ahead and start making my fillings and soon I'll have a new pie. Thank you for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel so you can keep apprised of any new videos that we have out. Also, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I will respond to all relevant questions and comments. Have a great day and hope to see you again soon.